In the example here, we are asked to find all the rational zeros and factor. So uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the rational roots theorem, I suggest you uh, take a look at one of my previous videos about the rational roots theorem or rational zero theorem. Uh, so we're going to assume that you kind of know this already, but uh, I'll try to put the link in the description, by the way. So let's take a look here. We've got 10. This is our value for P. And we've got the coefficient here, 1, and this is our value for Q. So this fact right here actually makes this problem very easy to go about solving. And uh, we list all the factors of 10. In this case, 1, 2, 5, and 10. So this right here comprises our set of all the possible rational zeros. Okay, so all the possible rational zeros. So I'm going to put all possible rationals. Okay, now in this case, we may have potentially three zeros. So notice we have one, two, three, four. We have eight potential candidates that could be zeros, but of course, the most that there could be are three. So not all of them will work. So you have some choices. You can do uh, one, two, three, four, maybe. Of up to eight synthetic divisions, you might do less. If you find three zeros, you can stop. Uh, the other thing you can do is make use of the uh, factor theorem. And uh, the factor theorem says, well, if one of these is a zero, when you plug it into the function, you should get zero. All right. Um, that's also part of the remainder theorem. Uh, if the remainder is zero, um, then you'll you know that it's a factor. So uh, there's a, a couple of different things that you can apply here. Uh, one of the easiest things to do is, of course, just take these numbers, plug them in on your calculator, or view them on the table of the function. Okay, so I'll give you an opportunity to do that, and I'll wait a few seconds. You can hit pause right now if you'd like. Okay, so you might have found, after you punch that in on your calculator, that you've got negative 1, a 0, um, you've got a 0 at 2, and you got a 0 at 5. The question here is where did these come from? What factors? Well, the easiest thing to do is just say, okay, well, if x equals negative 1, then it had to have come from x plus 1 in this case. So think about it. If you take the 0 factor property, set x plus 1 equal to 0, well, x equals negative 1. The same thing here, you take it backwards. So in this case, x minus 2. And in this case, x minus 5. And it just so happens that when you multiply these three binomials, you get this uh, polynomial here exactly. So the polynomial f of x factored looks like this. x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 5. So if you expand this right here, you should get this function right here that we started off with. So it's really not too difficult of a problem. Um, I'm just going to add in a little bit of bonus material here. What if you had gotten x equals, I don't know, one third? Well, you might think about this and say, oh, well, that's easy. It's x minus one third, which is a good start. But you have to clear the fraction. So you multiply this by the denominator that you see there namely, in this case, 3. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3 and distribute. So 3 times x, and I get 3x. And 3 times negative 1 third, and I'm going to get negative 1. So this, I'm sorry, let me fix that. I get 3x minus 1, and there you go. So if you had x equals 1 third, this is actually the factor that it came from. So this is just a little bit of bonus information, nothing to do with this problem. But uh, you may run into something that looks like this, and I just wanted to be thorough enough and explain that for you. So good luck.